Today and every day of my presidency, I pledge to do everything I can to continue that promise of freedom for African Americans and for every American. So important, nothing more important. This tour was a meaningful reminder of why we have to fight bigotry, intolerance, and hatred in all of its very ugly forms. All right, folks, that was President Donald Trump speaking at a tour in the African American Museum of the National Mall yesterday. You know, here at TV One, we used to have a slogan, we see black people living, laughing, loving. Donald Trump actually got to see black people yesterday, and he might have dropped by the, the exhibit of Frederick Douglass to realize that he's no longer with us. It was Donald Trump's first visit to the museum, which opened in September. It celebrated, celebrated its one millionth visitor last week. Trump had planned to go there on MLK Day, but something happened, and all of a sudden, he just canceled the visit. Oh, it was that, it was that spat he had with Congressman John Lewis. Uh, that was the reason why. Trump said the building was, quote, about love. An odd description for a museum that tells the story of the black experience from the hundreds of thousands who were brought here as slaves to those who fought for the civil, their civil rights in the face of Bull Connor's attacks to those who were soldiers who were lynched in their uniforms. Trump also lamented the fa fact that the United States is divided, though he did not acknowledge the divisions he's created through his hateful rhetoric and immigration policies. We're a very divided nation, and we have been for many, many years, decades. I mean, you go back to uh, the founding, and I would just like to see if we could bring people together. Uh, so many bad things happening, and by the way, so many great things happening, like the museum. But we're going to try very hard to bring people together in a much stronger way. It's just so divided, so sad to see. Folks, that was the interview that Trump did yesterday with Craig Melvin on MSNBC. Uh, part of the tour included the exhibit of Trump's Housing and Urban Development Secretary, Dr. Ben Carson, a retired neurosurgeon who achieved worldwide fame for his groundbreaking surgical skills. And while some civil rights groups welcome his blatant condemnation of the recent spike in anti-Semitic incidents, Others said it was not enough. When Steve Bannon occupies a West Wing office of legitimacy for alt-right white nationalism, it's a problem. It's a problem. The president can't condemn anti-Semitism and have the chief architect of the alt-right uh, in his West Wing. The FBI's latest um, a hate crime survey showed a rise in uh, a hate crimes against African Americans. Uh, against Jews, against folks who are Muslim. So we have seen this. So be clear about this. This is a serious, serious problem where we have seen our fellow citizens hurt. Now, we've not seen that many arrests, which may speak to the need for more vigorous prosecution, more resources devoted to, to the challenge, but it also means that literally the president has got to step up and man up and speak out and speak out forcefully and do something about it as a matter of policy. All right, folks, let's break it down with our panel. Dr. Greg Carr, chair of the Department of Afro-American Studies at Howard University. Liz Copeland, founding president of the Urban Conservative Project, Inc. And Spencer Overton, president of the Joint Center for Political and Economic Studies. Greg, first and foremost, uh, so Donald Trump realized black folks exist. He goes by the museum. Uh, and, okay, your thoughts? <laughs> well, the joking with the brothers on your staff earlier, if, if our friend, the director, Lonnie Bunch, had had a sense of humor, he'd have dressed up a Freddie Douglas impersonator to come around the corner and jump out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, yesterday, while he was at the African American Museum, perhaps they stopped by the exhibit of Henry Box Brown, who had to escape slavery by get, putting himself in a box and mailing himself to Pennsylvania, or maybe Harriet Tubman, who he named in his remarks, but who would have been a criminal when she was alive. Jeff Sessions has been trying to lock her up. Yesterday, the most important news was not Trump and his black minders. It would have been nice to see John Lewis with him, but you know, he doesn't trust John Lewis. Uh, the big news was 10,000 people he wants to hire to Trump's paterolas. I think he's going to really try to put 11 million people out of the country. They really want to make it white. So while he was at the museum, maybe Lonnie could have helped him understand that what happened then and what happened now is a direct relationship. Right? Ladies, I don't really give a damn about Trump visiting the museum. I'm I concerned about policy. And the bottom line is, I still have yet to see a single piece of legislation, a single policy that speaks to African Americans, and I'm still looking. I've been waiting oh, since, since, the, since the, the primary. Right. I've been waiting since Cleveland. I keep asking folks, and I've yet to see 
anything. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, the, the Urban League has uh, recently start, talked about how black Americans and their plight hasn't increased or gotten any better during the Barack Obama administration. But what we have here is we have a failed opportunity for the president to really showcase what he wants to do. Now, he says with, with uh, education, school choice, black people should give him a, an opportunity, give him a chance. But without any clear policy, it's hard for us to give him that chance. But, he, then, go, but he goes to a school in Cleveland that's a failing school with an F grade that was founded by the guy who was the founder of K-12, who was fired by a brother, Nate Davis, who was the chair of the board because the guy was abysmal. As somebody who supports school choice, you might want to pick a better, a better school to represent the idea of school choice. I think he has a problem with being, the administration and our president has a problem with being able to either articulate or de define what he wants to do for black Americans. And then when he brings people into his administration, like Ben Carson, who's a brilliant man, but you put him in front of HUD, it seems a little tone deaf. You have him leading HUD, he has no experience in housing nor urban development. And the one person that actually has this experience, who is a not just a political strategist, but has the requisite education, they fire because he was critical of him prior to being brought onto the uh, administration. And there's not that many well, black first of all, you're talking about Shermichael Singleton, yes. who you're talking about, which we discussed. Spencer, this is real simple. Hmm. Only black folks Donald Trump has known have been celebrities. Hmm. And again, I, I, there's no policies. I've seen nothing. There, there was nothing during the campaign. And so that's fine. You went to the museum. That's right. great. Yeah. Black History Month, yeah. you got a tour, you walked around, you signed the book. Right. You, All you, right. Yeah. You, you know, you can't just do the photo op here. You got to sit down and engage in terms of policy. And in terms of engage, sitting down, is you can't just sit down with celebrities, right? You got to sit down with, uh, you know, uh, the leader of the NAACP, leader of the National Urban League, uh, folks at Howard and other places. Well, and again, th that's what I'm waiting for, Greg, because, again, the photo op is one thing, but what are you going to do? Uh, not only that, uh, you could talk about, the, you know, the, the museum being about love. Voter suppression ain't about love. No, sir. Voter suppression is in that museum, and exactly. he's practicing it every day. Exactly. Voter fraud, he's lying about that. Corey Lewandowski, his former campaign manager, came out and said, there's no evidence of voter fraud uh, in New Hampshire. Right. And so, again, uh, just like I wasn't impressed when Republicans went with Congressman John Lewis to the 50th anniversary of Selma, and oh, yeah, took the photo op, it was great being here, but they came right back to D.C., did nothing about the Voting Rights Act, and so I don't care. Care. I don't care right. if a Republican or a Democrat uh, goes for the photo op. What's the policy you're going to be involved in? Well, Roland, we're watching the policy unfold. He doesn't have any positive policy for black folks. But as you said, while he's wandering around, I, I, I agree with Thomas Friedman in today's New York Times, there are several Trumps. While they're minding him, enjoying himself being president, the policy is moving forward. This deportation force is going to be real. That's going to affect black and brown bodies. You got Paul Ryan traveling today to Texas to talk about the wall, trying to find money for the wall. The senators and congressmen are in their districts right now because they're being confronted with people with questions about the Affordable Care Act. And as you, to your point, Jeff Sessoms, at, as the Attorney General, he's not only going to not try to go and find vote, voter suppression, he's going to turn on the people who are trying to vote. So the policy is being unfolded as we speak. So, so Roland, my sense is that Omarosa is at the center of black folks and Trump. And I guess my question is, what has been the engagement here in terms of News One Now and Omarosa? Have you all had any kind of Yeah, I talked to her, but again, uh -huh. I still haven't seen any policies from the president. Uh -huh. and, well, I, was, I, I, was, I haven't seen any policies from Ryan's previous chief of staff, right. from Steve Bannon, chief strategist. Right. I have not seen that then also come out from the House Republicans or, or, or the Senate Republicans. And right. so, again, conversation is one thing. Right. I want to see what's concrete. I have seen nothing concrete about HBCUs, nothing concrete about housing. I've seen nothing concrete when it, came to, when it comes to uh, black-owned businesses. I've seen nothing. Zero. Well, have there has been absolutely nothing. Did you right. hear anything about the HBCU? He's supposed to have some kind of directive. I'm still on, but that, that, that executive order hasn't come down yet. Exactly. But again, that's an executive order. I've seen nothing. Many, many people in those circles that you named would argue that their policies are for Americans and that if we carve out one population that we are contributing to a more yeah. racial divide. I still now, haven't seen it. <laughs> and so the policies that they're talking about to, to ensure that there's 10,000 um, more people added to ICE, they're going to argue that that's jobs for all Americans, no, no, no. especially stop, African stop Americans. Uh, okay. well, first, no, 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 first of all, that, that first, may be true. That may be true yeah. that the, the stop and frisk policy, which is unconstitutional, well, and that you can they, they certainly, certainly consider that to be one. Mm -hmm. but 
but 5,000 border patrol opportunities, 10,000 with immigration and custom, um, those opportunities yeah. would be of allowed and but guess opportunities what? for black people. Yeah, but guess what? Uh, also, there's a story today in the New York Times where these farmers and ranchers who are big Trump supporters in California <laughs> now are freaking the hell out right. because the very right. folks who are sitting here uh, doing the work for them right. now might get picked up by ICE. That's right. And so now they're like, oh my goodness, well, fool, you voted for him. Exactly. He said he was going to do that, but right. you were stupid enough to actually believe it. But again, though, I don't, I don't want to hear that. Lip. Look, I didn't buy that crap when it came to President Obama. Right. Uh, you know, all, rising tide lift all boats. If you talk about those who are most in need, where are your policies? Again, I have seen nothing, zero zilch, nada, when it comes to HBCU plan. I have seen zero zilch, nada, when it comes to Trump, when it comes to a housing plan where African Americans were disproportionately impacted, 53% of all black wealth wiped out. Right. I have seen absolutely nothing when it comes to a comprehensive education plan. Nothing. I have seen none of those things. I, I please. Deregulation. <laughs> oh. I mean, let, let, let me know. I simply haven't seen it. No, it, there, there is no plan. This administration doesn't have a plan. Oh, I'm saying they have a plan, but what you said is absolutely correct. Like the Obama administration, they're saying it's going to impact all Americans, but the plans he's rolling out, and it's, let's be clear, it's not him. It's that Republican Congress and it's Steve Bannon and them, not always on the same page, they're going to harm African Americans. That's probably one of the reasons. If he were smart, if Omarosa were really talking to him, the low hanging fruit, the stuff that the eye candy stuff, is these things they shove in front of him right. to sign. Omarosa Executive orders. She but, is not creating but, nor but, crafting but, policy. But, but to your point, Roland, to Roland's point, there is no policy agenda for us because he's too busy trying to manage the policy agenda that his interests have, and they're going to hurt us. Somebody's got to be in that White House for us in terms of being an advocate, and it can't be for us. Look, voting, voting is voting for for African Americans is an issue. Donald Trump continues to lie, right. lie about voter fraud, supports voter suppression. He supported when it came to his lawyers during the campaign, and so there's a there's a clear plan to deny folks right. the right to vote. Okay, if you want to impress me, you tell Jeff Sessions when it comes to the issue of enforcing the Voting Rights Act. You stand before House Republicans and the Senate Republicans next Tuesday when you when you stand before Congress and say you need to fix the Voting Rights Act. The Supreme Court declared uh, unconstitutional. You want to impress me? Do that. Well, going to the museum does not impress me. That's right. That's right. Well, what you said, in fact, about. Obama nominating a black woman. I was at Morehouse the other day for President's Day. Y'all covered that. And I repeated it and I quoted you. I said, Roland has said this for a long time. If they had tried to nominate a, a black woman, perhaps we wouldn't be sitting here with Donald Trump. But Neil Gorsuch is now making inroads on Capitol Hill. It's on the front page of today's political. He's down there with a charm offensive. We're not looking at the things that are really going to impact us. But you're absolutely right. Trump is not going to go in that State of Union and say, don't suppress the vote. No. Jeff Sessions has been turned loose to do exactly that because he's already on his reelection campaign. How do you file for reelection the day you you're sworn in, then go have a campaign rally in Florida, and you're starting to call Mar-a-Lago the Southern White House? Oh, they have an agenda. It's anti-us. Simple as that. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air, and you still get shot by the cops. Oh, my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not going to let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. And we will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.